Now we're going to do some integrals, which technically could be calculated at calc 2 level. So for example, these questions could be on your calc 2 final, which will be a, a little bit harder than usual questions that you, you, you get. And it does require some trig identities. Uh, but since we just covered the Euler identity and its consequences that uh, uh, cosine x is this and sine x is this. Uh, we want to use that use it to evaluate these three intervals. Okay, so let's try that. And here's the idea. You want to integrate. Uh, so so let's let's call this a. Let's call this uh, B, and let's call this C, okay? So you want to integrate uh, E to the IX times, no, I times NX, I NX times cosine MX DX from negative pi. Now, the Euler identity says this is equal to, let's see, who can write this? What goes inside the parenthesis? We, we just wrote down the Euler identity. I want to see if anyone remembers. Cosine mx. Cosine mx, yes. Plus. Plus I sine I sine I sine Sorry, this should N N X N X Okay Alright, so that's what we have And then if you switch this around And then multiply, multiply You see that it, This times this would be A Right? And this times this will be B But then we'll, we'll have an I in front Right? So uh, we immediately see that if you expand this, this is going to be equal to A plus I times B. It's going to be A plus I times B. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. You can settle these two integrals just by one, one integral. Kind of nice, right? Okay, so let's actually do it. Uh, we don't want to write it like this. We actually want to replace the cosine mx using that. So let's see what happens. So this integral will be negative pi to pi e to the i times nx times e to the i times mx plus e to the negative i times mx over 2 dx. Uh, you can factor the 1 half outside and we see that there are two integrals here. There's the e, the i times m plus n x plus e to the i times negative m plus n x dx. And uh, you just have to know how, how, uh, how to integrate e to the ax. What's the integral of e to the ax? It's like e to the ax, but then it's the reverse chamber, right? Instead of, if you differentiate this, a comes out because of the chamber, right? But now you have to undo it, so you end up with 1 over a. And it, it, the reciprocal comes up, OK? Um, A e to the ax. Uh, so using this, you, it tells us that you, you simply have to take this number and put it in the reciprocal. Okay? So you put 1 over i times n plus n 
times e to the i times m plus n x plus 1 over i times m negative m plus n e to the i times negative m plus n x. And now you plug in pi and negative pi. Uh, yeah, actually there's there's like one more thing that I want to do. Uh, it, it's actually easier to go from 0 to 2 pi than negative pi to pi, right? Because uh, these functions are periodic, right? And uh, we, we are assuming that m and n are integers. So if m and n are integers, m and n integers, integers, then all of these waves, they fit in 2 pi. So whether you integrate from negative pi to pi or you change the domain from 0 to 2 pi, it will be the same thing because uh, they're, they're periodic functions. Do you agree with that? Is that okay? All right. So let me just write this as 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Then, uh, then here's another thing that we can do. Uh, when you plug it in here, what's that? 2 times n plus n times pi, right? So this is going to be using this, this Euler identity, it will be 1 over i times n plus n. When you plug in 2 pi, it will be cosine 2 n plus n pi plus i times sine 2 n plus n pi. And then plus, actually, sorry, that, that's what you get when you plug in 2 pi, 2, two pi times this, right? Uh, and then minus, when you plug in 0, what, what, what's the e to the 0th power? 1, right? And actually, the same thing happens in the next one. The only difference is that uh, instead of n plus n, we have negative m plus n. Uh, plus i times sine negative m plus n times 2 pi then minus 1. Alright, so uh, what's cosine 2 times some integer pi? Maybe we can think about the graph of the cosine and the sine. Here's the graph of cosine. There's 2 pi. It's, uh, it's like that, right? That's the cosine. Comes back up at 4 pi. At 6 pi. So at multiples of 2 pi, what's the value of cosine? 1. Hmm? 1. What? 1. 1. 1. That's the cosine. Cosine has the value of 1 at multiples of 2 pi. On the other hand, look at the sine. So here's pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So sine at multiples of pi has the value of 0. zero right? That's the graph of sine, right? So we know that this is going to be? Zero. This would be, and then one minus one is zero. Okay, all good. Right. Then you have an another one. It's some integer times two pi. So again, it's one. One minus one is zero. Sine of two two n pi that's zero. So what's the answer? Zero. Zero. We got zero. Okay. Uh, that's a bummer. Like we did all this work just to get zero. Okay, but not so fast, actually. Uh, it's not always zero. There's like one case where it's not zero. Can you figure out my mistake here? I've neglected a special consideration which could make this integral a non-zero thing. 
special case. Oh, I have to say, MN has positive integers. Integers and positive. That's important. Can equals Yes, that's correct. Okay. See, whenever you have a fraction, you have to be careful about what? Having the denominator zero. Okay. So this calculation will be only valid when M and N are different. If m and n are equal, then this is different. Okay? So here's what we established. For m and n different, these are zero. Okay? If m and n are different. But if m and n are equal, this calculation has to be modified. So let's Delete everything, and let's think about what happens if m and n are equal. So let's just say that this is m. Okay. So we're doing the case when this is m. Okay. So if I have integration from e t i m x cosine n x, so it's e t i m x like that, then what happens here? It's negative m plus n before, but n is m, so what happens here? Zero. Zero to the power. What's the zero to the power? One. one. Okay. So this one doesn't change. It's, even if it's m, this still integrates, and you plug in 2 pi and 0, it gives you 0. Okay. So that, that doesn't do anything. It will be just 0. But this one, when you integrate 1 from negative pi to pi, dx, 1 integrates to x, and you plug in pi and, oh, we, we decided to just do 2 pi and 0, right? When you plug in 2 pi and 0, when you plug in 2 pi, it's just pi. Okay. So that's the special case. So, uh, oh, but it's really pi plus i times 0, right? See, the imaginary part is the sine 1, uh, real part is the cosine 1. So before, in the previous case, when m and n were different, um, it just gave us 0, which is 0 plus i times 0. So that means these are both zeros. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you want to, to say that when m and n are equal, this would be pi, whereas this would be 0. Okay. So we, we figured out that these two integrals have the value of 0 and 0 when m and n are different. But when you have cosine times cosine, and the two frequencies match, they give you pi, non-zero thing. Uh, and if you, act, if you think about it, it, it actually makes sense. Because when m and n are the same, this is cosine squared mx, right? So it's mostly positive, right? It's, it's just 0 at a few points, but it's mostly positive. It's never negative when m and n are equal. So if you integrate from negative pi to pi, there's no way you can get zero. It has to have a positive area. Right? So uh, this could have been predicted uh, if you had that in mind. Okay? And uh, this one, I want you to try uh, using the same method. The only difference is now you're going to integrate Instead of the cosine here, you just replace this by sine mx, where I uh, erased it, but sine mx is uh, this minus this with 2i in the denominator. So try that one. 